I moved to the city of Melbourne 10 years ago. I, from as a migrant story, I came into Melbourne, the first city, and booked in to see a lot of the other cities as well. And I just fell in love with the city, it's the vibrancy, the architecture, the people. And I just fell in love with it the moment I landed. And I cancelled all my other flights to all of the other cities and said, this is home. And for the last 10 years, been part of such a beautiful and vibrant city. But in the last few years, seen, seen it slip just a little bit. There's a bit of sadness in the air. There's a little bit of emptiness on some of the streets. And so, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a person that I believe in. If there's something wrong or something is slipping, just stand up and do something about it. And that's what I decided to do. I decided to run, decided to put my name in and help the community that I live and, and work in as well. Going back to your question, uh, Leo, in terms of why as, a, as an endorsed Liberal candidate is the Liberal Party has um, has has chosen to partake in, in the local council elections. It is the closest to community and, and a grassroots level of hearing community voices and just being really proud and privileged to be part of being the endorsed candidate for the Liberal Party in, in this cycle. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it is uh, you know a pretty historic thing for the Liberals. So we haven't seen it before at Melbourne City Council, and if you remember how old Melbourne City Council is, it is it is quite quite a, a unique move here. Um, just on that point, before I, I move on, uh, I guess there is something we we often see at local elections, which is there's always this kind of rhetoric that you know party politics doesn't belong in local government. There shouldn't be endorsed parties and, and all of this. How do you I guess address a voter or a resident? Who, who might say that, you know, who might even, you know, like some of your policies, but because you're an endorsed party candidate, they don't want to vote for you? Ultimately, Leo, the party has decided to uh, put their name forward in local councils. And so therefore, as, as, a, as a potentially as as a, as a statement that local council matters, it's, it's really important. It's the closest part to community is the closest to hearing the voices of the community and and the party's just here the party is here and so we're here to listen and we're here to make an impact as well and that's what matters speaking of making an impact there is a, a wide field of, of candidates in this election you know there were um including your deputy you know eight on stage at the the town hall last night and that doesn't even that's not even all of them there's just so many how are you going to be able to cut through that um to be effective and do you think you do have a you know realistic chance given that huge field of candidates that's a great question leo and uh, i'm happy to have this conversation offline with you as well is how much of a big fan i am of the democratic process the political process where each and every one of us in australia has the ability to run and make a mark and play a part in the democratic process of shaping and influencing the community we live in and, and australia in general and so I'm really proud to be part of a great field of candidates. I know in confidence that the Liberal Party and myself will put forward a great motion and will win this election. Um, and so, but but also how cool is it that we all can partake in the process and be, you know, put our name forward and, and be able to influence and shape, influence and shape Australia. But what's really interesting is when we meet with community on the ground, when we meet with community and businesses on the ground, we hear the challenges they face, the opportunities they see. And based on a lot of the feedback we're giving, we're getting from community and businesses, we know we're in the right track, our policies are on point, and we know that we're hitting home in terms of what is needed for the city. And because it comes from a consultative approach, we know we're hitting home and we know with 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 significant confidence that we are going to win there. Always happy to chat about democracy, definitely. Um, something you mentioned right at the start as well is, you know, there's a lot of issues facing uh, Melbourne City at the moment. Um, what makes you equipped to deal with those challenges as Lord Mayor? For those who, again, you touched on a bit before, but who might not know your background and who might think, well, are you, you know, experienced enough to deal with what are some pretty significant challenges? That's a great question, Leo. Um Firstly, just off the bat, in the last few years, I've been in Australia for about 10 years, of which most of it has been working in community development. So I've worked in the NGO sector and the public sector as well around economic recovery and employment and edu education. And that wasn't necessarily accidental. It was by design because I feel from a values base, I feel like I've the entirety of my life I want as a result to be as, as, a, as an impact, I want to be able to create ecosystems and environments where people can flourish, can choose their future, can choose their destiny and flourish by way of education and employment. And those are the portfolios I've managed in the past, particularly around the city of Melbourne. So going back to your question around how would I be able to face the challenges of being Lord Mayor and deliver for the city, I have been working on city projects in the last few years. 
particularly at the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence, our land employment programs for the city of Yarra and for the city of Melbourne residents. How do we get people employed? How do we get people engaged and empowered enough to contribute to society? And then my, in my roles in the public sector, it was around economic recovery for the city of Melbourne itself. Just remember off of COVID, we had, we had the shop front activations where we had empty shop fronts activated and also Melbourne money, the rebates, all of that came from the, the, the funds within the public sector to be able to revitalize the city. So when it comes to the Lord Mayor ship and what is needed for the city, I know I can do it because I have, but also from my community development experience of working with the incredible executive directors, knowing to listen to the people, the pulse of the people to be guided and shaped by what the community wants, Leo. And if you are elected, look, we know the, the Liberals aren't going to win every seat that's up for grabs, including in the councillor, right? If you are elected, how would you make sure that you're able to work effectively from, you know, councillors with all backgrounds and all affiliations, including, of course, you know, there are Labor and Greens who are likely to get a spot there as well? That's a great question, Leo. Ultimately, what we, the Liberal Party, has seen as challenges within the city are predominantly around driving value for ratepayers. We feel like there's not enough value being driven for ratepayers, so we look at that as a key point. And then security is an issue. Security in the city has been falling and failing, and so we look to target that and also accessibility and mobility. And going back to working with different councillors from different backgrounds, ultimately the common thread among all of us is we want Melbourne to work, Melbourne to thrive, Melbourne to live and breathe. And so working across colleagues across the bench, drive, trying to find congruence in, in our policies and our values and also coming uh, come bringing it down to what our value sets are and our value sets are trying to make Melbourne work, what's best for Melbourne. And so trying to find common ground, I would say, listening and hearing their pain points, negotiating, and then coming to that common ground of doing what's best for Melbourne. Something we've asked a few candidates on, I'll get your thoughts on it as well, because it is a bit contentious, is the current electoral structure for Melbourne. You have both group voting tickets for the councillor uh, election, and then, of course, in both the councillor and Lord Merrill elections, you have the business vote, which gives businesses uh, an extra vote. And I think about, you know, half of votes at last election uh, were non-residents. They, they were businesses. Um, do, do you do the Liberals support reforming both or either of those uh, uh, current electoral systems? Leo, not to my knowledge currently, currently we're very big on the legislation in, in place and in power. So we still we still have a lot of respect for the legislation in place. Potentially somewhere down the road, we could potentially review it. But ultimately, it is about respecting the going back to the democratic process in place. That That is the law passed currently. All right. Just finally, um, you know, it is weird. We don't have a, a real election date to look forward to, given it's all via post. But but in the coming a week or two or so, or how many how many days are left um, until those votes start getting shipped out? What are you going to do to make sure your campaigning is, I guess, as, as, as effective as possible and reaches as many people so they know both, you know, there is an election on and here's what you as the Liberal team stands for? And that, that's the best part of elections, Leo, is it's not necessarily campaigning, but it's an opportunity to hear and meet uh, the community and hear the voices within as well. So I don't actually, the team as well doesn't actually see it as campaigning, but just the opportunity to put your name forward and open up the dialogue for to, to and have com com community conversations as well. So we have been doing that currently, Leo, and we still continue to do so, is community listening posts, listening on the voice, or, or for the voice. Uh, and that comes by way of standing on the sides of roads and having conversations with people, letterboxing, door knocking, which are technical words for effectively getting an opportunity to meet people. And also online as well, much like the following that you have on YouTube, uh, Leo, and, and across online media, it's about the ability to be both online and offline to be seen and be able to create a conduit of access to have those conversations with community.